Time for Global Grid, and our international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert, is with me here on set. So, Doug, la francophonie, right. then. Uh, it's a staple of the calendar, isn't it, in the French-speaking world? Also, being quite criticised, though, isn't it? Coming under lots of scrutiny. Listen, it sounds like a trivial pursuit question, Stuart. <laughs> what do Canada, the Democratic <laughs> Republic of Congo, Cape yeah. Verde, let's throw in Bulgaria and Vanuatu while we're at it. What do they all have in common? <laughs> they, for some reason, are all members of this big club you were speaking about, La Francophonie, the Francophone, the French-speaking countries. And as you said, they do not all speak French. It's, it's a fascinating concept. You know, this club was founded really as 21 countries back in 1970, okay? Uh, going back, what, uh, almost a half a century there. Uh, and at the time, it was at the, uh, it was at the behest of the Senegalese president. Um, and it was sort of almost an African-driven initiative. And it was meant to be not just a linguistic group, French-speaking people, but also a spiritual community uh, of coming together, people who shared values because they spoke French. Let me show you a map, because this is what it's involved into. It is today um, a giant lumping mm. of organizations. Now, you do see some hardcore blue. What is that? That's Quebec, Canada, and, and France, obviously, there as well, where French is either the native language or the official language. You have a whole grouping of other uh, countries in here, which where French is either a second language or where French is spoken by a minority of the population, which is why you have 84 members plus observer states uh, in La Francophonie uh, today. So it's about 54 permanent members. But what's ironic about them is you see states down here. You see Argentina. You see Mexico. Mm. You see a lot of the Balkan states here uh, in, in Eastern Europe and, and, and further east. What are they doing in the club? Well, ostensibly, they're in the club because it is not, as I said, just meant to be a linguistic group. It's not purely French-speaking nations, but this idea that because you speak French, you're also in favor of holding common values. So it's a coming together people of shared values, values of democracy, of peace, of human rights. And that's what they're trying to promote the club. But like you said, it's very diffuse. Officially, 274 million French speakers in the world and growing spread across five continents. But it's hard to break it down where they're all really located. You mentioned Democratic Republic of Congo there, Doug. I mean, that's a country, isn't it, with an appalling human rights record. How on earth does that fit into the Francophone summit? Um, I mean, the idea really is to promote democracy and peace, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and it's at sharp odds, some would say, with the real mission. It's ironic because, you know, you go back to Francois Hollande. He spoke at this summit uh, a few years back. And what he said is, uh, Speaking French also means speaking about human rights, because the rights of man, he's referring to the Declar Universal Declaration of Human Rights, were written in French. Now, some have made the argument by that log log uh, logic, if you speak German, you're necessarily efficient. If you speak Spanish or Italian, you're, necess you're necessarily fun-loving and relaxed, that the language actually carries in its DNA some sort of personality trait that all of a sudden sort of imbues you with the values of human rights. As you brought up with the case of the Democratic Republic of Congo, you also have uh, countries, Rwanda is in there. Uh, there are some countries in there which clearly have questionable human rights records, which have come under scrutiny. And no, there is not some magic wand that by being in La Francophonie, you all of a sudden are some purveyor of human rights. But the idea, at least, is to promote those values. And there is this sort of, you could call it a noble amb ambition, or you could call it pie-in-the-sky dreaming, that by bringing these uh, countries together, you somehow will create some sort of higher ideal. I will note, you said Armenia is a host as well, right? Less than 1%, 0.3% of the Armenian population, really the elites, speak French. Although the, the Armenian, you know, organizer of this conference basically says that French is alive and flourishing. And yes, you have French minorities in a lot of places, Stuart. You have them in New York City. You have them in Louisiana. That was on our map as well. Um, but it doesn't necessarily, some people would say, does that necessarily mean they should be members of this club? Doug, thanks very much. Doug Herbert, our international affairs editor here on France 24.